Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. For today, I'm gonna to be your Akamai developer advocate. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up our very own instance of OwnCloud. And not only that, I'm gonna show you some of the possibilities and things that you can add to it from their marketplace. And we're gonna be adding additional storage, the block storage here on Linode, which is incredibly easy to attach to a already running Linode. Before we get actually into the tutorial, I briefly want to touch on the difference between OwnCloud and NextCloud. They are incredibly similar, especially when it comes to the kind of file synchronization and sharing platforms. NextCloud is actually a fork of OwnCloud, so when it comes to those file sharing features, it is again very similar. NextCloud is a little bit different because they integrate and bake in a lot of additional features such as mail server, collaborative like office software, and a lot more. This is really good if you want something incredibly basic. Granted, again, you do have that marketplace where you could go ahead and add some of those features. Another key difference is going to be the support that you're gonna be offered and the pricing tiers and all that. But just know these services are similar with some key differences. So do some research to kind of figure out what exactly you need for either yourself or your organization. So we're in our Akamai Connected Cloud dashboard here on Linodes and spinning this up is actually quite simple. We're just gonna click on create, create a new Linode go over to Marketplace, and it is gonna be one of the brand new apps right here. If it's not listed here anymore, search for it, scroll down, you'll be able to find it. So give that a select, and we're gonna scroll down here to the OwnCloud setup. This first little bit of stuff is gonna be your actual account in OwnCloud. So we have my username, password, and we're gonna pop in an email there, and then we want our root password for the database, and then a good password for the uh, database user. Here you can change the name of the database if you'd like to, but I'm gonna leave that as is. We're gonna create a limited pseudo user. Give my limited pseudo user a password. You have the option for your SSH key right here. I do recommend you do that if you're actually spinning this up into production for some extra security. I'm gonna keep this at no for now, but you should probably disable root access over SSH as well. And here we have our Linode API token. If you have your domain name set up in the Linode domain name manager, you can use an API token here. It will go ahead and set up the A records for you. Currently my domain is off site. So I'm just gonna skip that and fill this in right here. It says it requires API token, but this will still help kind of set up your host names and all that. So for this, I'm gonna call it owncloud and we're gonna do dot hopkey.net for the domain name. And then from there, it's trying to make me select my region. We have Debian 11 as the option. For the region, you're gonna to want to select a server close to you or your target audience. And then for this, starting off, we could just use the simple Nanode one gigabyte shared CPU. That will be more than enough. And of course, you could always upgrade it and expand it as time goes on. I'm gonna change the label to the actual URL that we're gonna be building here add a little dot there. And then last but not least, we have our root password. We have more SSH keys here, backups if you would like that. But for now, I'm gonna click on create Linode. And now from there, I'm gonna need to add that A record since I didn't use the API key. So I'm gonna give this a copy here. And as you can see, I'm currently using Namecheap for my domain names. I'm gonna go over here to advanced DNS. And then under the records, I'm gonna add a new A record. And for this one, I'm gonna call it what I typed in on the Linode dashboard, so own cloud, and at the IP address of the Linode. Check that, and there we go. So now what we could do is launch the Lish console here real quick, and this will allow us to actually monitor what the server is doing as far as actually setting up own cloud and the uh, services. And this is gonna be done not through Docker, this is done through the Apache install, so that's where a lot of things are gonna be stored in those uh, kind of familiar Apache um, directories if you are familiar with that service. So we're gonna let this do what it needs to do, probably gonna take about five minutes or so, that's what it took last time I did this. Hey, there we go, we have a certificate automatically created for us because we were able to get that A record in place in time. Do note that you're gonna to wanna to do that pretty quick if you're not using the Linode API. So by the time it gets to the point where it's gonna scan and check for that, it's going to be good to go. You should probably just use the domain name manager on Akamai. <laughs> Ooh, installation complete, let's go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close this out real fast and then go to owncloud.hopkey.net. We see our login and our SSL certificates in there, good to go. So we can then log into our dashboard and at the most basic level, you're good to go. But the problem that occurs is by default, especially when we use the cheapest Nanode, we do not have that much storage. I believe 25 gigabytes is the start. And this is a file sharing server. Chances are you're gonna to want to use a little bit more than 25 gigabytes. 
So what we're going to want to do is go back here and go under storage. From here we have volumes and we have the option to create a volume. We see all the pricing here. I'm going to do 100 gigabytes. Let's say that's a good start. You could create multiple volumes or multiple kind of, you could think of these as shares or they're going to be folders in an own cloud. So you could set it up really however you want. I'm going to call this one media because I do like video content production, stuff like that. So I would want a media volume. So from there, we click on create volume. Label must be unique. Um, clients, something like that. Create volume. There we go. So then really cool. It actually gives us some instructions here of what we should do to actually get this set up properly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my terminal. And let's actually log into our server. Let's SSH into it using that limited pseudo user we created, 104.237.153.15. Enter. Yes. Type in the password and then we are in. So first starting off, let's go ahead and actually mount this volume. It's good to mount the volume first before you set this up in. Mounting this volume, setting up permissions, and then setting it up in own cloud is kind of the path you want to go because if you do it out of that order, you might have some uh, issues with uh, the permissions loading in properly because of the databases. So sudo, paste this on in, enter. We are creating the file system and that will take it just about a minute or so. There we go. So now we need to make the directory. So we're going to run this as a sudo command again, make dir, mount into client, hit enter. And now we can mount the new volume with a sudo and then this command right here. So we'll hit enter and now it should be mounted. Now we need to edit the FS tab file to actually make it auto mount every time it boots up. So to do this, we're going to go sudo nano into the Etsy directory and then FS tab. Now you don't have to use nano, you use vim or whatever you're used to. Enter and then paste this in. We grabbed it from right here. Give that a right click and there we go. Now, just to kind of help us out with the permissions a little bit, we're going to add a couple extra little variables here. The first one is going to be D mode or directory mode. You need to add a little comma before that. D mode is going to be equal to 750. That is the permissions for that. And then we have F mode. So F mode, and that is going to be equal to 640, which is the permission set for that one. So control O, output that, control X, and now we can make sure it worked or that is going to work by running a sudo mount a, which will pull everything from the FS tab file, enter, no issues. Everything's mounted up fine. And just to really make sure the permission is set on that initial directory we created, we could do a sudo ch mod, and we are going to set this as 0770 just to make sure everything can read and write to it. And that is an MNT and we put that in clients. So hit enter, there should be no errors, which is good. And now we are going to run a similar command. We're going to give uh, own cloud the actual user and group permissions to interact with this new uh, volume we mounted. So instead, we're going to do chown r, and then this is going to be www data, semicolon www data that is the actual user group and whatnot for own cloud and hit enter and you can see we have no issues now if we go into own cloud here i go over here i go to settings and then under admin i go to storage right here external storage we are missing something we are missing local and that's because we need to do a quick edit to our configuration this right here is the own cloud documentation. These are the steps to actually enable that. What we need right here is this. I do recommend you kind of read through this. You have to start by setting up the correct permissions, which we have done. And then we're going to go into our terminal here. And I believe this is in var. So if we go CD into var and www type LS, we can see own cloud is right there. So if I CD into that and kind of show you guys everything that is in there, we can see data. We can see config, which we're going to jump into and just kind of show you what I was talking about with the user and group. If I do LS dash L, as you can see here, WW data for just about everything. Now let's go ahead and CD into that config and we are going to want to edit the config PHP. So we're going to go sudo nano config.php. And here is where we're going to want to paste it. We can go all the way down to the bottom of this right before it ends, hit enter here paste it on in and then I'm going to want to make sure the syntax is correct. So I'm going to space this out to 
Control O, output that, and then Control X to get out of here. Now I need to reload Apache real quick and do that. We're just gonna do sudo system ctl. We're going to restart Apache 2, hit enter, and no errors. That's very good. So we're in here, I gave the page a refresh. So now if I click add storage, we have the local option. For this, I'm gonna select all users. Folder name currently is local. I'm gonna match it with the volume we created. So this is clients. And then for the actual configuration, this is the location. So this is gonna be an MNT and then clients. So now if I click away, we can see we got the green light. Now, if I go back to my files, we will have a folder here called clients, which is linked up to that volume. So now instead of just having the 25 gig base nanode, we have that plus this um, external share here, which is just that client folder. And then you could see if I add something here, I can upload. Here we have a one click video that we've uploaded on this channel. I do recommend you check it out. This right here is the final video. So if I wanted to upload that here, just click on open and you could see all the permissions and everything works fine. And it's actually uploading incredibly quick. I do wish it told me it says a minute upload time. So when it comes to performance overall, this is super good. And when it comes just to the general layout, everything is relatively simple. They do have Android applications, desktop applications, things like that. We have our favorited stuff shared with you, shared with others. So as you add people to this, you could share files with people. People have their very own kind of private files. And then there's shares, which I set up here. I'm just gonna wait for this to finish up here real quick. There we go, it's processing and it's done. So when I click on this, it's not gonna like play the video, it's going to download it. That's one of the differences between Nextcloud and this is Nextcloud has a lot of those like office applications and file preview stuff built into it. Granted, if I click right here and I go over to the marketplace, this is where we can get some additions to expand the functionality of this if we'd like to, such as contact, two-factor, there is a lot of different things in here, including Collabora Online, which is kind of the default office suite built into uh, Nextcloud if you want to include this. We have calendars, PDF viewers, text editors, galleries, so for example, if I did want this functionality, I could go ahead and give this a click and all I would need to do is click on install. And usually these are pretty quick to get going. There we go, the app gallery has installed successfully. So now if I go up here, we have gallery that has been added. So if I click on that, we could see our photos and then you have this kind of different view. Going back to marketplace here, we could test this out with another application. Let's say we wanted this right here, this is tasks. Again, all I do, click install, app installed successfully. So if I go up here, you can see I now have tasks and this just added a full kind of task managing thing. I can add a list, I could call it something like video. And then within video, I can add an item. Let's say, make a video on own cloud. Fix my spelling, boom, new item. And then you could add a bunch of subcategories, percent done, due dates, all kinds of things, and that is just one example. And another really cool thing is if you want to try this out right now, you could click the link down below and get a $100 60 day credit for new users to get this spun up and running and play around with it. So with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. There are a ton of different videos on this channel covering all kinds of cloud computing topics. Do subscribe, ring that bell, check it out. And with all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.